You know, a lot of people ask me, Lawrence, why and how did you move to the United States? And I've never really sat down to make a video dedicated to that very story. So that's what this is. I'm going to tell you why and how I moved to the United States. And the why is sort of linked very much to the time period in which it happened. 2008, height of the recession. I was working in West London at the time and there were lots of redundancies being made. Redundancy, of course, meaning to be laid off um, in British English. And I was laid off. I was laid off and this was at the very time when my wife and I were uh, seeking to get her visa for her to stay in the United Kingdom with me. And we were going to just sort of set up camp there, um, not in a tent, you know, just obviously we were going to get our own apartment and um, live within legal means and all of that. Um, and it just never happened. You know, we lost the funds to be able to do that. But I was given a redundancy package at the time. So I was given just over, I don't know, a few thousand pounds. So we thought, well, sod it. Let's get a, two one-way tickets to the United States of America and live in Anderson for a year. Uh, we, we lived there for a bit longer than a year. You know, did I have fears about moving there early on? I, you know, I didn't really have time to think about it. Everything happened so fast. You know, I got laid off, suddenly here we were with this decision to be made, I made it and we moved. Uh, within about a month actually, it all happened very, very fast as I said and I, I think that kind of helped. It kind of helped in a way, I mean ideally you'd like to be able to have a plan in place but I've never had a plan and if I have it's always a bad one. So I'm glad that this went the way it did. I landed in, in America and I took a while to get used to that fact. It was almost like starting life over again in many ways. I, I was starting to know who I was and where I was in England. Um, I didn't really have to question any sort of normal everyday activities that went on because they were so ingrained in me. Um, but having moved here, you're learning new things all over again, you know. Um, how to say certain things and what things mean what to which people and what things are confusing to certain people like uh, flannel. You know, I, I asked when I first moved here to my in-laws, uh, where do you keep your flannels? Because I need to wash myself in the shower. And I think they understood it to mean that I wanted some kind of button shirt to scrub my body with. And then I started to realize that there was something good about being British in America. You know, people treated you, I think, differently to how they would have treated you in England. There's almost a, a deference that gets paid to you, an undue one, to be fair. I don't, uh, don't deserve nor ask for uh, deferential treatment or even preferential treatment from people, but uh, it, it certainly happened. And, and honestly, if you're starting life again, that's probably a good way to start it. Um, and that really did help, I think. And then there's a the question of how I moved here. Well, I didn't swim uh, on this occasion. We did get the plane, as I said. Air Canada, it was, and great service. TVs on the back of the chairs, you know, just as you'd, you'd want. And uh, they brought alcohol around, I think. And what more do you need in life, never mind on a plane? Yeah, that was nice. Air Canada, I would do again. And that represents the one time I've been to Canada because we stopped to refuel in Toronto. Saw the CN Tower from miles away, you know, um, still can say I've seen that now. So that's physically how we got here. But in terms of, you know, how did I remain here? What, what was the process for getting my visa? Well, it was a little different. Immediately we started applying for the visa, which you can do at the uh, USCIS website. Um, that's where you can find all of the forms in order to do this. We had to go through uh, numerous forms in order to do it. So I had to prove my marriage to Tara was legitimate and that I wasn't just here on a green card, you know, type marriage. And then we had to get affidavits from people to legitimize the fact that we were married and having physical you know that stuff the other stuff and send all that away now the thing is about visas they're not cheap I mean I didn't just get this for free you know obviously I think a lot of people are under the impression that once you marry into a nationality that you are therefore then guaranteed um, some right to, to live and work here no you you have to pay the fees and uh, definitely amounted to more than a thousand dollars which was a lot for us then because I couldn't legally work for the first nine months of being in the United States. And so what happens is when you come here on a marriage visa, you get two years, right, on your initial visa or your, your permanent residency. It's not particularly permanent if you're only given two years, but we'll, we'll ignore the semantics with that. And I lived and worked here for two further years before at that point having to extend the visa process and then you get an additional 10 years. You know, I'm good until 2021, which means that you at least get these videos from America until then. So you know, count your lucky stars, really, that the immigration process is that thorough and robust. 
you know, and once you live here, you're not electronically tagged or anything like that. You're not a prisoner to the state. You know, you go about your business as, as you wish, as long as you're not uh, doing your business in a public park. You know, that's where I am right now. Go for a pee by that tree. But I'd be arrested, probably, for indecency and then deported. So you have to be careful. You can't just go, you can't go breaking the law. A lot of people have asked me, Lawrence, have you thought about getting your citizenship here? Um, yes, I have. There are definitely pros and cons to doing so. One of the cons, of course, is an additional expense that I've not yet accounted for. Um, it is certainly something that I've thought about, but you know, I'd ha I had heard that if you do so, it, it makes it challenging to keep your British citizenship. Uh, dual citizenship does exist here, but uh, since September the 11th, uh, they've they've tried to clamp down on it a little bit. So it could be quite uh, testing for me to have both, um, but certainly something I'll look into. I do intend to do a video devoted specifically to the visa process and to look into that. I just wanted to give you a sort of a, a broad overview of how and why I moved here. There are more uh, answers to these questions that could come up in a later video, I believe. Um, so, you know, for example, can you vote if you're a resident? Well, no, on most elections you can't. I can't vote in the US elections. I can't vote in uh, local elections, gubernatorial elections and things like that um, as a resident. So that's where becoming a citizen is certainly a pro. But they say, you know, if a pro is the opposite of a con, what's the opposite of progress? It's Congress to anybody not paying attention. 